Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Victoria to the Super Nations mod as a North American Union. Last episode, we left off with uh, basically, you know, uh, democratizing or spreading freedom to the Russians. Um, this episode, we're going to look a little bit more into what other countries can go ahead and actually get into our grand Republican um, sphere or so. I'm thinking of actually going to uh, this Beiyang, China. And going ahead and trying to get them to become a democracy. Um, of course, they have quite a few troops. 43 million pops, 100 brigades. But their tech is only 12 out of 30. So I think we can um, get something going here. Especially if we get the Japanese to jump into the war with us. Um, where are all of our troops, though? We have the Pacific Fleet, Western Seaboard Fleet, and Eastern Seaboard Fleet. And our armies, are these all of our armies? I thought we had more in Russia, right? Yes, they're all stuck in Russia. Um, in fact, this actually might be fine because we could send them over here potentially. I don't think there's too much, there's not too much attrition. So it might be fine to send them down here. And these guys are a satellite nation of Japan. Um, they won't give us military access though. Mongolia won't give us military access. But regardless, we could probably send them over here. And we'll figure it out. We'll probably send a fleet over there to get those troops over there. But it'll be a lot easier just to march these guys to the eastern Russian area. Um, let's send them... Oh, so they can walk through the territory. Or terrain. It's because they're black flagged. No. They're fine. Mm -hmm. Can't go through here, but we can go through these nations, interestingly enough. Uh, but let's go ahead and just send them here. And that should be good enough of an area. Um, yeah, let's do that. Send you there. Send you here. Here. Uh, here. This is 56 supply limit. Uh, this is 54. And we'll send one over you to here. And that should get all of these guys or these armies out to the eastern eastern Russia, um, which will help us as far as going to war against China. Um, get another great power on our side is the idea here. And eventually, of course, we might end up turning on our allies for the purpose of getting them to become a republic. Um, not yet or not right now, but perhaps in the future as we um, establish a lot stronger foothold. Um as far as the great power allies go. Because uh, Russia should be a fairly good ally. Maybe in the future. Uh, they have 18 out of 30 tech. Which isn't bad at all. Um, granted we're at 25 out of 30 at this point. But it's not terrible. They'll survive a conflict. Of course we have all of South America under our control. And I am building some more troops into that between episodes. Um... No, I did not do that between episodes. <laughs> I sent these guys down between episodes. Um, so we can start replacing some of these armies. Even though they don't have airplanes, they have Dragoons still. And that's fine. We'll just go ahead and replace the infantry with Stormtroopers. Uh, that's the least we can do. Uh, you are fine. Let's do you. Get rid of the infantry here. Uh, same thing with this army. Let's go ahead and get rid of the infantry. Actually, let's not do that because you do not have any stormtroopers. You three armies, on the other hand, do. So I'm going to send these armies up here to the north and hope that goes well. This army has no stormtroopers. Well, this army does. We could... Actually, no, we have plenty more stormtroopers right here. Let's get five of these guys and send them down here to Baltimore. And that should get that army all done up. And this is just going to be some residual stacks. This army we're just going to wait for probably some more. Um, are we building any? Ideally, we could get some airplanes built. So we can wait for that and then also get some engineers. So we'll do that. And that should be fine. Um, I don't know if we're actually doing any good with these automotive industries that we're trying to go for. Actually, we do have a tank factory coming along in Nueva Leon. Um, in fact, that is so important. I'm going to go ahead and try to get as many craftsmen as possible in the area. Because those national focuses really are not working 
like I wanted it to. Uh, Nueva Leon. Uh, let's go ahead and select all. And let's go down to where that factory is. So M N U right here. So it's actually completely full. And they are lacking a lot of manpower here. Producing 0.12. RGO output efficiency, that's great. Uh, we should be able to start building some. Or begin building some armor. Yeah, we're already getting some armor um, for this Edmonton one. Uh, and we are going to go into that. Um, right, because we're operating at a loss. Let's go ahead and increase tariffs just slightly. Um, what else can we do? We could go ahead. No, let's not lower military maintenance. Uh, maybe up taxes to 50% across the board that put it that put us in the green and hopefully a lot more of these um technologies can push us well into the green so steel production um iron and coal production all just went up um hopefully that gives us a, a decent yeah that's a decent boost in income right away uh commerce industry all industry tech is already done army tech is already done uh culture we could go for mass politics i'm not going to just yet um, we're going to go for probably some of these more commerce. Um, plus 5% tax efficiency will be great for us. Um, maybe organizational development. That's all loan interest. Factory throughput efficiency, admin efficiency. And of course, these are all, this is probably a really good tech because it's plus 7% um, taxation efficiency. Let's go for bank inspection board. As that will be a pretty good one for us. Um, to get some more income, if minus 0.10 and diplo points plus 50%. That's a pretty good ruler if we had a lot of infamy to sort of spend. Um, as of right now, we do have quite a bit of leeway there. I would like for a great war to start at some point soon. And maybe we can work on getting some of these French um, areas taken out. Um, for our our own benefit. Algeria has Liberia has 107 brigades. They're already at the ninth great power slot. In fact, they may become a great power. They're already industrializing. Their military power is pretty far up there. Um, interestingly enough, Liberia may not be a colony for long. Uh, let's go ahead and see. I want to make sure that we can. Or maybe it's not here. Never mind, we already did it. Um, just like changing the vassal reforms. Um, let's go ahead and keep trying for this expedition. We are losing soldier pops. Is it because, yeah, they're all marching? Which is causing us to lose quite a bit of troops here. And Greece, acquire Peloponnese. Is that all that this war needs? Looks to be the case. Let's go ahead and give that to Italia. All right, good. We're at peace now. All right, look at that. That's actually good stuff right there. Um... Three thousand income at the moment. It's just gonna get a lot higher as we get that next tech too, because that plus five percent um, for income is gonna give us what five percent of twenty thousand, which I think is about another thousand. Actually, seven percent. So we'll have more than a thousand more income, um, which will be good because we are going to start producing tanks. Look, armor is being produced right now, so we're in a pretty good spot there. Um, how is that factory looking actually? So it is producing 2.02 .02 now. So it's doing really well. Um, I'm going to want to switch perhaps over to Clerks. Oh, Geronimo has been apprehended. Interesting. And Italy is going to war once again against France this time. With Great Britain as an ally, Italy is just warmongering hardcore, so... Um, will he be fine? If Britain's on their side, then perhaps. 
Dutch, Portugal. I'm going to wait it out just a little bit. It looks like they're pushing in quite well. We'll go ahead and join. It looks like they're targeting the French. Maybe a lot of their troops are overseas. That's also a possibility. Because they have, like, no troops in the homeland. And the French or the... Yeah, the French are, or the Italians are just wiping out their troops. Oh, right. Um, oh, we're at war with the French. <laughs> I realized that, but at the same time, I didn't. Um, let's go ahead and send... Okay, now they want peace. The thing here is that we could probably get some territories. We could take the Sahara and sort of iron out the borders here. So we could add Wargol, place in his son, um, Sahara. So seven war score and it's 5.5 infamy, but we can handle the infamy. And we do have... I want to make sure that they can go through our land. So I'm going to actually have the Liberians go ahead and take this out for us. Oh, they're going to keep taking war score. Can we take more, perhaps? If we're taking the Sahara over there, perhaps it would be worthwhile to take Agadir. Or we could take their French colonies over here. There's quite a bit. Laos, Cambodia, and Cochin China. So I'd rather take it all perhaps in a great war. Um, but we do have that 5.5 infamy, and we're taking a loss of about. We'll probably be losing about two almost per year. We can leave it at that, actually. I'm fully fine with that. Uh, we can't propose peace. They will accept the software. Let's go ahead and take it. That's fine. So now we have the borders sort of more ironed out. Uh, looks a little bit better for us. So North American Liberia. Great, great, great. Mauritania. We could release them as a vassal too. Potentially. There's not much of a population basis here. So I don't think they'll be able to do much for us. Um, it's really down here that we have a lot of the Liberians as far as troops go. But anyways, all these troops should be in Russia now. Great. And we'll kind of wait for them to recover their troops. Let me make sure I have... Yeah, I have military access to them. My armies are just struggling to recover. Because right now it's 12.30, so we wait till the end of the month. It goes to 15.81, so they are recovering just slowly. Republic of China wants an alliance. Um, we won't be going for it. They say Republic, but they are a presidential dictatorship. Um, Beijing China is also president. They're all presidential dictatorships. And there's our tax efficiency. Um, we're going to go ahead and go down this tech tree just for the reinforcement gain because it is remarkably slow um, for us. Bang China does want an alliance. We are going to go to war with them, so we're not going to take it. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and check up the factory again. So it's now completely um, full, and they're producing 2.67. I would like to get some clerks in the factory to kind of get that throughput efficiency a lot better. Yeah, there we go. So it's 2.68 now, but as it switches over to Clerks, um, it should be able to go up a little bit. Yeah, it's 2.69 now, so even though it's a full factory, um, which we are... Oh yeah, it's already expanding, so that's good for us. There we go. Reinforcement gain is being worked on. Uh, we'll take the prestige. We're making a lot of money. This is good. This is good for us. And it looks like tanks have stopped being produced, mostly because we're probably at our limit. Um, we need... How much do we need? 
2.71. So we are already using all the tanks we're producing is used to maintain the tanks we currently have. Look at those tanks. Beautiful. Um, so these armies, for example. Tanks could... We could get rid of one engineer and put two tanks per army. Which is what I'm thinking. I think only have one maneuver, but it should be fine. Let's see. So we'll have this tank go over here. And if we go to this army, it does say... So plus 100% siege efficiency. If we take out that army, it's now at 76%. But if we add in the tanks, it goes back up to 100%. So that's actually really good for us. Um, yeah. All right. I'm trying to think what the difference is between tanks and the engineers. The engineers are purely a support role while tanks are on the front lines. Okay, that's actually fine. Fine for me. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that then. So we have how many tanks do we have over here? We have quite a bit actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send these planes to this army. No stormtroopers. Um, we should expand our so city select all. Let's go ahead and do this and make sure we're focusing on our planes as well, if at all possible. And they're already being expanded, but I want these to produce as many planes as possible. So we have one plane being produced in Arizona. That's fine. Let's go down. So Nueva Leon has 701 clerks and are already producing 2.73. So it's like, it's kind of marginal, but it does help a fair bit. And there's more reinforcements. Let's go for experimental psychology. And these troops. This army's not recovering at all. Being China. Let's go ahead and actually start justifying against them. Um, we'll get the Castabelli for a while, so it's not too much of an issue having it earlier. And let's see if we can actually get these armies all built up. So we have 48. Oh, that's actually that's the um, that's our army stack. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take out our engineer. Just keep one in the army. Um, same for all of these. And you will also just keep one engineer. And start sending in the tanks. This stormtrooper can go down here. Um, so we have three more armies and we have several more tanks. So one, two, three, four. Uh, let's just do that. Split that army. No, do not disband. We need them. Uh, take you there. And I'm sorry, guys, if you do hear some construction in the background. There is some construction going outside my window, and I have no control over it. So hopefully it's not too blatantly obvious or impacts the gameplay. I'm not sure if my mic is going to be um, able to take it out um, at all. So we have... Can we get more planes produced? Doesn't seem like it. How much are we producing, by the way? If we look at our planes, we are producing... 10.59. In fact, we are the largest producer in the world, and we're producing 2.74 as far as tanks go, and we're the, pretty much the only producer in the world as far as tanks go. Interesting. It'd be nice to be a... Um, have state capitalism just for this reason, so we can actually build these factories, because obviously these national focuses are not working very well. Um, hence why I think I said in the previous episode that I sh would look into maybe modifying a little bit so the national focus can be a little bit more powerful because they just aren't doing anything not a single thing for us at least uh, let's go ahead and get these armies out to the west coast now now that they're done and these four armies should be able to wreak absolute havoc upon the chinese here so we got plus three attack uh, plus one attack plus two defense we got plus five attack and plus three defense so adam rice is a legend mr adam rice you are going to lead 
this great offensive force for us. Uh, we'll send these two armies out here to LA as well as Monterey. And that should be fine. So let's go ahead and... Uh, we actually take this event. We'll go ahead and integrate the territory. Um, it doesn't really do much for us, but we're going to do it anyways. Nationality-wise, of course, this is the current country um, outlook. Canada is pretty much completely Americanized, um, besides the eastern portions of Canada. And, of course, the Cherokee are well. Um, having a great time there in Oklahoma. And Mexico is still pretty much purely Mexican. Um, besides, of course, there are some... Um, Yankee elements, of course, you got some Americans moving down here into the area, especially in Central America as well. And in South America. In fact, British, French, Dutch, do they have, because they actually have a lot more Dixie and Yankee Pops than they do any other. And according to this, those Pops are not um, accepted cultures. So what is Japan doing? Colonial Conquest of Siak. So they're actually going to war against, what, the Dutch again? Yep, the Dutch. And they're dismantling some fortifications. Oh, Russia. Who are you at war with? Why are you doing that, Russia? That's a very dumb move. Yeah, we're not going to help them. Because I'm not in the mind. Because we don't have a lot of troops here. And Germany is honestly our ally. And I'm not going to get involved in this. They're still going to stay in our sphere. We could, of course, keep allying them. Um, there's not much of a problem there. So these tanks, how fast are they actually? I'm kind of curious. So the army goes 7 kilometers per hour. Armors travel, travel at 8. The stormtroopers are a little bit slow as well. Um, these armies down here, which are all part of the old retinue, they're still seven. Um, the Dragoons actually go faster than tanks, apparently. Interesting. Okay, anyways, let's get these armies on to the ship and send them out to the west or the east. East? See, technically it's the east. Go to America, it's west. Um, so we have plenty of troops this fleet can handle. And I'll send them over to the Yellow Sea. So they're allied with um, France now, apparently. So maybe during this war, we could actually take some more um, land from the French. Psychoanalysis, great. And no, Switzerland isn't going to stay a great power. Liberia should be able to overcome them fairly quickly. Eighteen brigades. Yeah, they just don't have a large population. I think a lot of their great power status is completely based off their prestige, which is almost five hundred. Alright, so the armies are doing great, and as soon as our fleet arrives, any day now. Oh, that war of China, or Japan now. The Great War. Oh my gosh. Force France to dismantle. Oh, well that happened. I didn't even realize what was happening. <laughs> well, guys, the Great War is happening, and we are not taking part in it, apparently. Russia isn't on their side, they are they. So, in 1910, the First Great War started, and it's likely going to end probably fairly quickly. Um, ooh. They haven't called us in at all. Well, anyways, we're going to go ahead and start our war against, um, they're already at war. Italy will accept, Liberia will accept, um, against China. We're actually going to call, will this be the second great war in this case? 
So, North American War for Chinese Republicanism. I'm not sure if that's a <laughs> too much of a of a stretch as far as the name goes. I'm trying to play around with the name and see if um, it really works out for what we want. Let's go to pet king, and we'll send you guys here, here, oops, there, and here. Italy not accept. Oh, they have a truce with France. That's why. They can't accept. And that truce is until 1913. So we're about to have two great wars at the same time. But of course, that's not happening anymore. Um, France will be dismantled, which means that French Indochina will be taken away. Unless we have any say in it. So let's go ahead and send uh, these troops down here and try to take as much of um, Vietnam as we can. Oh, we get total war. Oh, I forgot about that. That's going to basically make it so we can't go to war for a pretty long time, actually. So hopefully it doesn't affect us too much. Um, let's keep pushing into them. You're right here occupying. Let's send you maybe down here. Oh, we made it first to the South Pole. Great. And now, who are they at war with? Interesting. Huh. Basically, Republic of China and Beijing China are both allied against Japan, while Guangxi China is against them. This is a really interesting kind of war. Very interesting. And where is their capital, actually? It's not in the south. Because normally it's Peking, but I don't see a capital marker there. I don't think it's in the west, either. That's really weird. I can't find it. If we choose, usually it goes straight for the capital, right? Oh yeah, down here on Anhui, on King. Um, Heavenly Kingdom's armies are still here, even though they're completely extinct. So maybe we should send some troops down there to take out their capital. Chester Davis, who is my Adam Arias? Go ahead and take out this army and then go down here. Actually, I'm going to have you go down there and you do something like this. You go here and Saigon is already ours. Let's go to Donkey. Uh, you go down there. Wait, is this for us? Don't we already have those reforms? Yeah, free press. And all allowed. We already have these reforms. Oh, but we can go ahead and limit it. We're not going to limit it. It gives us more prestige. gives us temporality. Oh. I see the issue here. <laughs> A large po pop or part of our population will become socialist. Now. There are, socialism is a state capitalist party. We don't get a lot of benefits as far as, or compared to our eventualism, inventionism. Factory owner cost. Huh. It's anti-military is the only thing I think is really negative about this to me. Um, but giving more socialist pops might actually be fine, because we can get the Workmen's Party elected, temporarily, which might work in our favor. 
Um, so a large portion of our population just became socialist. Uh, let's send you down this way. And you, my friend, can go out west. And it's only at 4% for us. Um, Jeffrey has plus three attack. Let's go ahead and send them down to defeat that army. Um, is there any other armies we can go ahead and attack? Perhaps down here. Oh, they're going to take it. Gosh dang it. Um, what we're going to do is actually do a little bit of a speed, um, little time lapse here. So I'll see you guys in a sec. guys here we go so basically what we're going to do um we could wait no it's fine um bang china might fall apart but we're gonna go ahead and go for this anyways um just because they're in the middle of the great war but i went ahead and added um the take colony of indochina i haven't actually used this cast probably before so i'm curious how it works um and it might actually be a lot more efficient way to take these colonies now i'm looking at it it does cost 11 infamy, but I'm thinking that basically all these cores for Indochina, this entire little area, is going to be taken from that one guest spell eye. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that, as well as install Republican government in um, China. Let's do that. And there we go. So yeah, Indochina is now ours. So either inherit them, um, or make them a vassal of ours. We're going to go ahead and inherit them right away. So it does work. That's kind of a cool little cast spell eye then. Um, claim into China, which we can go ahead and do. And also organize um, this. Establish the Greater Republic of the Americas. So we have to have a mass politics and great war experience. Uh, that's not till 1919. So, of course, there's another event here. I'm not sure if I looked at it or talked about it at all yet. Um, but we do have another event, interestingly enough. And so, of course, we can establish the Greater Republic of the Americas, which is sort of a evolution of the previous event where we basically vassalized all of South America. Um, yes, 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 yes. So, anyways, that war is done. We do have the Republic of China, which is now a thing. There's another Republic of China down here. Um, but this is the true Republic. And there's only 92 brigades. And they are still at war. They're probably going to fall apart. But, yeah. Send you guys here. Go ahead and... Uh... We don't have military access. Get the military access. So we have 14.5 infamy right now. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I was going to go ahead and take all of Morocco as well as a colony, but I went against it just because um, it was going to be a little bit expensive. I didn't want to use up all of our infamy in case we get involved in a great war, which I hope we can do fairly soon here. Um, but anyways, we're going to end this episode here. So anyways, thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. As always, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing if you would like to see more content just like this, more frequent uploads. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time.